Transform. Well, a lovely good morning. Thank you for sticking and staying with us here on BTM Television. My name is Bruce Mugabe and this is The Daybreak, the show that kick starts your mornings just like no other person can do that. And of course, we always run from the hour of 7 up until the hour of 9 a.m. in the morning. And then we let you go and uh, you know finish up your work just like you had planned for the day as you expect to you know to, to also see the events that we will have told you in the morning as they shape up the day. Now, as I promised earlier on, we'll be speaking or breaking down matters of the infrastructure system in Kampala. And of course, as I promised, we'll be hosting a Lord Councillor who happens to be the Secretary for Works and also Physical Planning when it comes to KCCA. However, before we dive into the discussion or even before I introduce <coughs> my guest today, I would like us to look at that clip that transpired yesterday as uh, the executive director of Kampala, of KCCA, uh, was you know, in inspecting some of the roadworks to see how far these have gone. According to the Executive Director of Kampala Capital City Authority, KCCA, Doth Kisaka, this is one of the many tours that will be conducted routinely for quality assessment till when works are 100% done. Potholes which are small, that is a regular work as the funds allow. So all our maintenance units in the five divisions, Kawempe, Rubaga, Machi India, Central Division and Nakawa, they are on the roads as we speak. So the minister came out to see them at work, and we have done so. You saw us at uh, Press Road, you saw us at Nsambia. Different activities are being done on the above-mentioned roads, like rehabilitation, construction of pavements, reconstructions, pothole refilling, and other road works. It has very heavy traffic. They've done the drainages, they are going to do the walkways, they are going to do... That road is being transformed into two lanes. So rehabilitation is going on not only there, but also in Rubaga Division, in all the divisions. So wherever the work is ongoing, we are going to be inspecting regularly. Recently, several Ugandans hit social media demonstrating excessive potholes on different Kampala city roads. This forced the president of Uganda, Yoel Kagutam Seveni, to direct the finance ministry to avail KCCA with $6 billion to fix the mess. So now with the money that we received from government through the African Development Bank, major rehabilitation has started. We have inspected a road in Machi, India. Our release for this financial year had not been fully released. It was a balance of 60 billion, which was outstanding. Now the Minister of Finance has released that money as we budgeted it. Some of it is for roads, and some of it is for other developmental work. The report was compiled by Patrick Itaka for BTM News Today. Well, that is a story that uh, we did run yesterday. And, uh, you know, according to the executive director of KCCA, they are going to be you know, doing a regular, you know, checkups, regular maintenance, and also making sure that, uh, you know, the people that are contracted to do these works are put, you know, at uh, gunpoint, if I could say so, so that uh, the works are executed as they are expected to be done. Like I said earlier on, my guest is a Lord Councillor, and that is none other than Honorable Hakim Chiza. Thank you for making time for us today. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me, and good morning to the management and you, the host, plus the entire community of Kampala. 
In a special way, let me extend my greetings to the people of Rubaga North, Rivia Parish, who voted for me, and also to the team we lead together, led by the road mayor, Elias Ukwago, all the division mayors, all authority councillors, and division, division councillors. So I'm grateful to be here for the program. Okay, mm. very many things. We will begin our discussion just mm. right in there. Now, first of all, uh, you are a Lord Councillor, you are a citizen of Uganda, you yes. stay in Kampala, you lead the people of Kampala. Yes. As a leader of uh, the people in Kampala, or specifically in Uwagano, are you, you know, proud of the infrastructure systems that are, uh, you know, in Kampala? Obviously, I'm not so happy, not at all. Mm. First of all, if you go down and look at my car, it, that can communicate and it will explain. Because I made, uh, uh, I was responsible yesterday in the evening to make it clean. Mm. By today in the morning, if you look at it, it's as if uh, it has been swimming through the, <laughs> okay. yeah, the potholes so, the uh, of Kampala. So uh, no one is happy, no one is uh, grateful of what is happening in the city. So, we are not grateful at all. Well, um, Mr. Hakim Chiza, what mm. could exactly be the problem? What is seemingly the problem that uh, is leading to where we are currently? Actually, I've seen uh, that clip you have played mm. when the ED was making some inspections throughout, along, uh, uh, th throughout the city, mm. together with the state minister and the team. She said that we are going to back on the program of making routine inspections. This has been, been made, they have been doing routine inspections, they have been doing site visits of where the construction is made. We move around the city, we know what is happening, mm. but it's only one thing which is lacking, and it's the major problem is lack of funding, the insufficient funding of the infrastructure development and maintenance in this city. And many people don't talk about it, actually, mm. When the president ordered for the release of six billions, everyone thought that uh, that is the alpha and omega, mm -hmm. that maybe that is the ending of uh, the problem is in the city. Mm -hmm. They even forget that that money is, does not even come out of the pocket of the president. When the, the president makes a pronouncement, people think that he has gone to Rajtula and sold some cows. Eh? It is coming from his pocket. No. We had that money as part of the budget for this current financial year. This current financial year, we had 26.5 billion for road maintenance. When they talk of road maintenance, they mean uh, patching those holes, uh, repairing uh, security lights, things of that nature in regards to infrastructure maintenance. Mm -hmm. So we had to receive 26.5 uh, billion shillings. In two weeks' time back, we had only received 11 billion. And uh, you don't forget that we are only remaining with two months to end the financial year. So any money which is not utilized by that time, by 30th of June, it has to go back to the consolidated fund. So we had it in the budget. Our questions are, why wasn't the government releasing that money? Two, why is the government releasing it today? You know the procedural matters of uh, making procurements, uh, contracting, getting contractors. Mm -hmm. So it seems that the government does not want us to work uh, well, on uh, these roads. Honorable, uh, mm. allow me to address you because you are honorable, uh, yes. a Lord Councillor. Mm. Uh, first of all, uh, could it be that uh, you, the elected leaders, mm. are the people <coughs> that are frustrating the works of the executive or the executive arm of KCCA, that is in regards to, you know, um, passing, you know, the, the budgets or maybe even uh, allocating the money to different sectors for the programs that are supposed to be done by the executive? I'm part of the executive. Mm. You see, how work is done at KCCA, mm. it is two-way. It is political and technical. Mm. But there is a cycle where everyone is uh, networked in that chain of work. By this law, KCCA Act, every strategy, any development must come out of, or a new program for, for development must come out of the office of the road mayor. But it doesn't limit that uh, it is only the road mayor to think of the development in the city. Mm -hmm. Even if it's the executive director or any director thinks of anything, 
has to introduce that idea to the office of the old mayor. And the technical side led by the executive director has to offer technical support. If the matter requires legal assistance, the director of legal must provide legal uh, knowledge or anything. If it is the, in the physical infrastructure, the director of uh, engineering and chemical service must provide knowledge or guidance. So, the road mayor convenes what we call the executive. And the executive is composed of uh, the road mayor, the road mayor, and us, the three ministers, because at that level I'm a minister. And also the executive director has to make presentations to report, eh? and we discuss. After discussion, we get opinions. Then from there, we take any matter to the council, which is chaired by the speaker. And the entire council, composed of the 54 councillors, NRM councillors, FDC councillors, NUP councillors, they make reserves, they make decisions. Once a decision is made, it, entirely, it is handed over to the technical side for implementation. And our role becomes eyes on, hands off. We begin to monitor and supervise. So again, in our functions as the policy makers of the city, we are supposed to make a budget. And we made a budget. That's why I'm explaining to you that for the road maintenance, where you see potholes, we had put 26.5 billion shillings for the entire financial year, which is current, the current financial year. But what had been released initially, two weeks back, it was 11 billion. So on the order of the president, they added 60 billion. That is totaling to 17 billion. But we hear some voices that the Minister of Finance had already released. They are counting 22 billion in that regard. On the side of the infra infrastructure development, that is road construction and reconstruction, we had a vote of 78 billion. That is what we had budgeted for this current budget. But do you know, to our surprise, when the financial year is yet to end, just two months remaining, May and June, we, two weeks back we had received 9 billion. In the first quarter, they released 6 billion. In the second quarter, they released three billions. Now I've heard the executive director, she has not yet reported because she's the one who receives the money. Tomorrow on Friday we have a sec an executive meeting where she has to report that we have received the balance of 61 billion. So what you mean is that even the six billion Uganda shillings that was you know, pronounced by the president yes. is even in fact you know, already part of your budget, not even a money that is coming from elsewhere. That is what I'm telling you. And, and even the budget, mm. which is, because I've told you, it is 26.5 billion for road maintenance. Even if you add that seven, 6 billion f by the order of the president, mm. even the entire budget of that road maintenance is not yet complete. We are requesting for the balance. The unfortunate bit of it is that we have only two months to go. And you know, using public funds, there is a number of processes you go through, procurement processes how to acquire, how to secure mm. contractors. You must go through that process. So does the two months which are remaining enough for us to utilize that money? Like the ED has said that even the six, 60 billion of the mm. infra infrastructure development has been released. Do we have enough time to make procurements Eh? And then we allow time for the contractors to make construction. In fact, so, in fact, even before we go to you know that money uh, and the time being enough, mm. first of all, uh, how much is you know uh, budgeted to be spent on at least maybe a kilometer overload? Because uh, first of all, <coughs> we understand is this money even enough to cover you know the pending business that is in Kampala? Of course, um, the central government has reluctantly funded or is reluctantly concerned of the infrastructure development in the city. We have a report from the World Bank that was for 2019 mm. where the World Bank, the experts from the World Bank were suggesting or proposing that in case the city could move anywhere in terms of development, what is needed is 1.4 trillion shillings. That is 1,400 billion shillings. Mm. That is what is needed moderately. But do you know what is got 
as a budget oh, because the budget is determined by the Minister of Finance. Actually, it is cabinet mm. and parliament who, who are responsible for confirming the budget. In the financial year 2021, 2020-21, our budget, the entire budget of the institution was 367 billion. The current financial year 2021-22-23, the budget is 475 billion. The projected budget, which is not yet passed in Parliament, but it was passed here at, at KCC level for the next financial year 23-24. The budget is 423 billion shillings, not even getting half of what was proposed by the World Bank. Now, what do you expect out of it? And sometimes we, we query the intention of the central government. Mm. When Jennifer Msi was uh, the executive director, she even got 900 billion at one time. In one of her budgets, she got 800 billion. Why is it that you cut all the money when there is Chisaka, when Rukwago is back? Because by then, mm -hmm. Rukwago was suspended by that time. Mm -hmm. the, the president decided to release a lot of money. So sometimes we insinuate that uh, maybe the government wants to frustrate, frustrate mm -hmm. the works because uh, the entire 96% of the elected leaders are opposition. Okay. But not, the government is not interested in serving the people of Kampala. So that is one of the issues. When it comes to uh, costing of the kilometers, mm. this is a report I made in January this year. Okay. It was uh, on 24th. Let me just have a look. Okay. I made research that a kilometer of road in Kenya is constructed at 3.7 billion Uganda shillings. 3.7 billion. A kilometer in Rwanda is costed at 2.9 mm. billion shillings. Not even moving to that side, even here locally. If you go to other local governments like Masaka City, they are making constructions. They are funded by World Bank and a program called USMID. Mm. Each kilometer of road in Masaka, same quality, same size, same length, is uh, constructed at uh, 2 billion shillings. Here in Uganda, when you go to Masaka, mm. I was talking to the chairperson of uh, Butambara district, Madam Nambo Rashida. She told me for them, they cost it at 1.5 or 2 billion shillings. Why is it so special? Why is it so special? How special is it for Kampala that a kilometer can go for 15 billion, a kilometer can go for 10 billion? If you look at the funding here, uh, under some roads constructed by facilitation or by support of World Bank in the project called KIDIP, mm. hmm? Look at this uh, road number, Lukuri Road. Lukuri road. Mm. It was 7.71 7 .7 kilometer. Mm. The total cost was 70.5, 70 mm. which means each kilometer went for 9.1 billion. That is a whole lot of money. Because when you look if, at... If you mm. go to Kurambiro Road, just... Eh, let me go to Akasha. Okay, Kurambiro, Akasha, just here. Mm. Eh? In, in, in Kamocha. There were 9.77 kilometers. The total cost was 90.4 billion. Each kilometer went for 9.3 billion. If you go to uh, Kabusubunamuaya Road, mm. it is 8.06 kilometer. It was constru constructed on a total sum of 93.7 billion. Each kilometer went for 11.6. Oh, so, does, does now the problem come in on uh, the people that are contracting, the people that are constructing the roads? Where is the problem? The problem come? here, mm. people may not uh, look at it because mm. it is indirect. Mm. It is the rampant corruption which is happening in our country. There are some agents of corruption at KCCA, but the network is very big. It is across. There are even some agents of corruption mm. with a network, even from the Minister of Finance. 
And that's why I think uh, the Ministry of Finance has resorted not to allow KCSA to make direct payments. Okay. For KCSA, you just prepare your documents, Requisition you sign mm -hmm. that we have allowed it to pay, and then the Ministry wires the money direct to the contractor. Why? We don't know. Has so, this been able the, to help the process? Or no way. It wasn't in the process? No way, because mm -hmm. this was a project for some five years, uh, but actually it ended in 2021, and some are still ongoing, for example, like RBG, mm -hmm. RBG and Nakamira drainage channels. But the current funding we got from the African Development Bank, which is yet to construct 69.7 kilometer. It is, the, the total sum of the fund is 288 US million dollars. If you translate it to Ugandan shillings, mm -hmm. it is uh, 1.06 trillion shillings. So if you calculate and divide this money into a number of, the number of kilometers which are prepared to be worked on, the 69.4, mm -hmm. Each kilometer will go for 15.4 billion shillings. Now, now this, this also points me to uh, an issue that you know, is uh, puzzling my mind, puzzling you know, the viewer's mind. First of all, the president allocates 6 billion Uganda shillings. This is visibly a drop you know, in the ocean. Um, how is this even going to be you know, partitioned to see to it that it can be effectively used maybe to fill the potholes because you have roads that need you know, rehabilitation that need to be you know, worked on afresh? How do we see you know, this even being help? What I can tell you, that is nothing. And it, it will do nothing. You'll never see any change. Mm. You, you, you actually, you may even fail to observe whether that money has been used or not. Because which road is safe? Every road you go through. I have been moving through Mawanda Road. Mm. Actually, I went to, I, I reached an extent of beginning to count the potholes because we are making priorities where to start from. Mm. But where would you patch and where would you live? Eh? So this is not money. You see, to a surprise, I wonder somehow how Mr. Museven, or uh, Jenny Museven, does his thing. Mm. She has just filed a supplementary budget of two po two, 200 po 205 billion shilling for just state house. state house. A supplementary, when we are just remaining with two months but you come to the entire capital city of the nation and then you order for a release of six billion. Not even, this money is not outside the budget. Mm. Our budget, like I've told you, was 26.5 billion shilling for, for, for road maintenance. So it's just ordering for a release of an area because that money was intended to be received in the second quarter. Mm. Second quarter, it is... November, December, and January. Yeah. That money was meant to be received uh, during uh, that time. Uh, honorable. So, um, mm. you have asked me a question. Mm. Are we going to see any change mm. upon receiving this money? Well, actually, I'm telling you, there is nothing you want to observe. Because everywhere, mm. you tell me, if you look at the cross-section of roads when you are here, look at the road which comes from Lago to Antinda. Is it safe? Is it okay? No, not at all. Look at the road, Mawanda Road, which is just coming here, just, just here. Mm. Is it okay? Not at all. Where, where, which road is safe? So, do you tell me that you can use that money and, and ex expect to see any change? Well, that is, uh, those are the words of, uh, you know, um, the Lord Councillor of Rubaga North. That is uh, Honorable Chiza Hakim. Now, he's saying that we should not be expecting any change with the six billion Uganda shillings that was released by the president Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. Now, for the Luganda audience, um, this you know, baby gambo, ebiva, ewa Lord Councillor, owa Lubaga North, a gambanti nesente President Museveni they are releasing the, that is six billion Uganda shillings. Owa they are the Ministry of Finance, ewe reze eli KCCA. Nesino sente tezigenda kumara kubanga omulimu oguli wu. Chitereze vlogi, tezigenda kukola. Tezina chizigenda kukola. Kubanga, bulirugudo ruo itamu, mm. luju devinya. Kugambi, wabero li wano, tunula kukurosi ya section. Ngude ze tolde wano wetuli. Nga tuna genda wala, tuna genda wafe, kasubi, na mungona, masana, furugala. Mm. Nga tuna tukai. Mawanda road, wemba denzija. 
ntuse no kuloza ntandike mbale ebinyi actually mpise mulago bwenti mm. echiri e mulago olugudo lweita ku mulago luguke ku mawanda road buli omwa dojinga ayagala kola chi ku munne tunulo ku vee mulago pakanti nda chi echiriwo yita wano ku old kira road oluita wano ku chitebe cha fecheni up mm. e kamoja what is happening so nechi mulowoza nti president yale zinze sente billion mukaga mm. tezina chi zigenda kola chi okubiri Sentezo tiazi jimu nsawe. Obati bazi kute kute wantu wana. Ziva dechi tundu tundu. Kubajeti ya fe. Mm. E ya bilion. Abri mwomu kaga. Nubu tundu vutano. Erimu budget. Erimu kugu wako. Ntimu wiki sibiri. Bandi wa deba ama lada. Okujitu wayo. Na niwa deba katu wako bilion. Kuminemu. President we koze order. Ni baledi zingo mkaga. Tu wakafuna kumina msamu. Mm. Ku, abri mwomu kaga. Wajako kumina msamu. Ndozo siga za bilio ni muenda. Ezo zijadi. Na yenge miezi tusiga zemeka. E bilio kumalako financial ya. Atengo kwa kulizo wa government. Toke ila nchana ugama anti Bruce. Going a construction company. Geno nkole lorugudolum. Waliwe mitendela jo itamu. Muteka li vate kawe li ya pochu wa mendi. Olanga mauli reno. Olanga ku BTV. BTM. BTM. No olanga wa. No itabuli ya yagalo kola. No maloku wa sunsula. No bakiriza. Ni mbate la yosente. Ni mba obu de chivaita mobilization ukunonya wiko zesebua katimu. Na ite kali gamati. Umaka gwewe nsimbi ugugu wake na kuzomwezi ni zuwera asatu. Mm. Sente zo naze mtako seza zikolachi. Zidayo. Kati wa ude butumala ukukozisa sente. Zo naze wa debaganyo kule rizinga. Evyo nabi uzo. Ok. Yeah. Uh, Lord Councillor, I would like to now move into the processes of contracting and all that. Now we understand that. Just like you just explained, <coughs> you know, the processes, the bureaucracy involved in there. Now, this is a state's advertisement, and this could even go international, and it could also attract international bidders to, you know, take on the bids of road construction in Kampala. It could also attract the local, you know, construction companies. However, we've seen most of these contracts being awarded to, you know, international companies. Could this be the effect, the failure to, you know, award Ugandan contractors the contracts to, you know, construct the roads because they feel the pain. They are Ugandans. Could this be also a factor? Actually, for us, mm -hmm. uh, many of us, we think this is just a game. Why we say it? Even the so-called external contractors or mm -hmm. foreign contractors, for example, in this program of World African Development Bank, all contracts were awarded to Chinese, mm -hmm. Chinese companies. But what is we think behind this, these are just briefcase contractors. You remember when we invited them to our council? I remember very well. I when, saw, when, yeah. when, when they came, many of the representatives of these companies did not have, do not, didn't have a worker permits. Didn't Actually, they were expired. expired. Mm. They don't have visas which allow them to stay in the country. They don't have identification to show they are part of these construction companies. If you try to locate around the address of these companies, you cannot find. Mm. So we, we, we intend to think that there is a, some games which are played here. Two, when these contracts are awarded to these foreigners, the Chinese mm. and other construction companies from Italy and wherever, or America, uh, UK, you'll find that when they receive a contract, they are not the very person working on the road. They subcontract our okay. local mm. companies. You mm. find Abu Baker Construction Company, Muga Construction Company. And you ask questions. Why didn't we protect our own? Mm. Because these people bring a number of Bachina for, 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 for every work. Even the smallest job on the, on, on the road, on the site, they bring a Chinese. Why don't you employ, why don't you give contract to these local companies if they miss some uh, equipments, you can even put security for them and then ball for them. And actually, you just cut from your payment and clear eh, the expenses or the loans. Mm. So the intention, actually, sometimes I repeat when I hear the I repeat Ugandans when I hear the government say that buy Uganda, build mm -hmm. Uganda. In the area where I preside over as an executive secretary, that is works and physical planning. You are giving jobs to, uh, to foreigners. We have uh, unemployment rate which is almost 
there are many younger engineers from Macquarie University, from all universities, which are coming out. They don't have jobs. Actually, this would be, actually, we would even pass a policy that every engineer who is passed out of the mm. university, we give a minimum payment of 500, cut us for survival, mm. eh? for, for, for survival of these young people. As you train them to become good engineers, send them out of the country, let them be exposed to, 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 Modern skills and uh, you know ways of of work of works. Lord Councillor, yes. uh, now you see this is a good plan that you know mm. you, you're just unveiling to to, to us. But uh, what have you done about it? As uh, you know that uh, other arm of the body, or even personally, you have you you know put these views to the executive, to the council, you know, to <coughs> implement this? Because when, when you talk of us, the executive, mm. I don't get you. Do you mm. mean the oh, executive? Let's, let's say technical uh, the technical team? Mm. Have you put them there? Have you put them to the executive of the council? You know. You see, mm. everyone in the state hall knows where the problem is. Actually, I've seen the ED on mm. your screen. Mm. She just failed to mention it that this is not money, it's not a fund which can create any change. Mm. Because she's appointed by the <coughs> president. She cannot do it. But for us, we have freedom to speak. I can speak it. Tell us. But, but, tell but, us. but mm. always we have suggested ways. Mm. But the challenge with this central government has micromanaged the city. And it is the same central government which is trying to create, uh, how do I call it, conflicts within the KCCA. Mm. Actually, the very person who is responsible is the president, who appoints the ED and deputy ED, mm. who appoints the two ministers, Kabanda and the Chofatogabi, Chofatogabi, who appoints the six RCCs, who appoints the ten directors of all the departments of Kampala. The appointment, all those different appointments were made when the president saw this, this act was created in 2010. Actually, mm. it was amended. Initially, it was KCCA, KCCA, KCCA. Act. Mm. It was amended to manage the politics within Kampala, mm. where the president realized that majority elected leaders in Kampala who have voted are from the opposition. So he had wanted to remain with a, a, a touch in the state. That wouldn't be bad. But the influence he puts, he doesn't even want this law to be operation, operationalized. He keeps on bringing orders, eh, presidential directives, the same presidential directive of releasing six mm. billion. Would it require a president to go and make orders? Because the procedure is laid in, in the laws. We have a mother law, the constitution. We have the local government act. We have the crisis act. Mm. We have the procurement act. We have everything. Would it require the arm of the president to stretch it and say that Minister of Finance released that money? Why isn't it the Minister of Finance following the procedures of releasing the money? Why was the money not released in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the required time? Mm. Eh? How would you release money when a financial year is ending? So the arm of the president is coming in to manage politics. But upon doing so, that is when we see that Kampala begins to get problems uh, and, and just just like you're saying that Kampala is beginning to get problems because <coughs> of that you know invisible arm of the president so uh, should we say that now the problem of Kampala is specifically you know the disagreement or the failure to you know agree between the technical committee and the council it's not about the technical committee mm. because normally I see them trying by the way many of them not all but many of them trying to work within the laws as guided by the law because mm. they are public servants. They are also guided by public service uh, principles mm. and procedures. There is also even an act on public service, how does a public servant work. But the problem is within the office of the president. That's why the president keeps on giving orders. So these public servants, the ED, the deputy ED, the technicals, the directors, and other lower mm. sub, uh, workers, employees, they, once they are moving on to work on things, 
then directives comes from the president. You hear the minister ordering. When you make priorities for the roads to be done, you hear that the minister said that <coughs> there is a road he wants to be done. When you, you make priorities according to the need, need of the city, mm -hmm. you hear the prime minister has ordered that we do this work, we road. So the influence, the political influence, cannot allow them to work well. Fortunately for us who are elected, normally we are restricted by the laws and we cannot go beyond the limits of the laws. Mm. So we stick in our lane. We don't go beyond. So whether you like it, whether you are the president, in fact, even implementing presidential directives, it is okay because he's given executive powers. Mm. He can order for anything, much as it's not needed. But once a presidential directive is declared, for us, we say, okay, you bring it in writing. He has made a presidential directive, eh, you bring it in writing. Then, in the process of implementing a presidential directive, we cannot implement it illegally. We must follow the laws. That is where we depart from. For the technicals, they always want to, to react immediately. Mm. Eh? Fire brigade in a fire brigade manner. For us, we said, ah, ah, it is a presidential directive. Let us implement it as guided by the law. Because even if it is the president, the president must be under the law. No one is above the law. Okay. Now, uh, Lord Councillor Chiza Hakim, yes. Honorable Chiza Hakim, yeah. as you happen to be the executive uh, secretary for you know planning works and uh, all that in KCCA, we would like to understand your point of view now. What should be the priorities? What should be you know the prioritized roads in Kampala as you know the fixing program is now going to be started? Or have you even already set out the priorities? And the priorities are, are there because mm. there is a structure of leadership. Mm. Uh, on the side of the technicals, at State Hall, there is the ED, who is the uh, accounting officer, top management leader, mm. and the DED, and the other directors. Mm. When you go to the divisions, they have town clerks and division engineers. On the side of uh, the political, there is the road mayor, executive, and the council. When you go to divisions, there are mayors and councillors. All these people are originate, originate from the villages mm. because we have uh, 1,425 villages in Kampala. They originate from there. So they know the priorities. Eh? So we generate priorities from local areas. Where I sit in Rubia and mm. say, you see, I have this road of uh, Mapera, which goes to Kosovo. It is a priority, mm. depending on uh, the capacity of uh, service it delivers. Once we correct all these priorities, mm. we bring them to KCC and say, under the project of KIDIP, we, we constructed so many roads in Nakawa Division and Makingi mm. Division. If we get another fund, like from African Development Bank, let us concentrate more in Irubaga. Mm. Eh? and maybe central. When we get another project, let us concentrate more in Kawempe, and we make priorities in Kawempe. So the priorities are there. What is lacking is funding. Like I've told you, we have been receiving 78 billion for road for infrastructure development. When we talk of infrastructure, we talk of roads, we talk of drainages, we talk, on, uh, we talk of uh, security lights. That is what all, come, all, all, all contained in infrastructure. In fact, let's speak uh, yes. that plan. Is there you know, a master plan to you know, develop infrastructure in Kampala? Let me first mm. uh, finish the other point. Mm. So, we have been receiving 78 billion. Mm. Now, in the coming budget, it is cut from 78 to 10 billion. And we have fought ah, over that. Just we changes. went to the Ministry of Finance, yeah. we went to Parliament, we went to COSAS, we went to Fiscal Infrastructure Committee of Parliament, we went to Budget, actually we requested to meet Budget Committee. Mm. They have not yet given us an invitation, but we, 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 we wrote to them. It is just now when individuals, fellow Kampala community coming out to show what is the, the, lot, the roads in, uh, in the infrastructure of Kampala, 
now the, the the parliament is waking up you you see the deputy speaker talking describing the nature of the of the road of the potholes there is the big one there is a small one there is mm. the, the role of parliament and cabinet is to give money to cases a not cutting you don't know what we have gone through from since uh, September when the first budget called Sachula came to KCCA. The government, the Minister of Finance, the Parliament insisted on 10 billion. It is just now when they are seeing that people are now awake, people of Kampala, they are trying to say now we are going to find ways of seeing that we adjust on the budget. What is required is money. When there is money, construction can be done. When there is no money, nothing can be done. Is there hope? Because of course, there is hope with, because with, uh, um, speaking 10 billion, I understand with just speaking 10 billion, Uganda shillings, it's not even one fraud. kilometer. Hey. It does not even cost a kilometer, you know, hey. uh, a kilometer you cannot the cost of a kilometer mm. since mm. you know, looking at uh, mm. you know, the provisions here, it is at least 9.1 billion Uganda shillings for just a kilometer of road in Kampala. Now, is there hope? First of all, I want to appreciate the lead of opposition. Mm under the NUP because when you see the lead of opposition now you, you mean that is the NUP mm. they had a good proposal in the alternative budget which I attended in parliament they said if NUP is in leadership KCCA will be given two trillion shilling two trillion which exceeds the pro you know the progression of, uh, of World, World Bank, Bank. Mm. and that is what is required mind you you see the entire national envelope. KCCA, Kampala, contributes 75%. But what is remitted back? We have a total budget of the current uh, national budget, which is ending, of 48 trillion. 75% of that money, I think it will be like 33 trillion, mm. just got from Kampala. As leaders, we are saying, Instead of giving us this little, little money, give us 3% of what we collect from Kampala. That means out of the 33 trillion we contribute to the national treasury, if we, they give us, they remit us 3%, mm. we would get like a trillion shilling. If we could be getting a trillion shilling per financial year, and we say that we are going to be using 2 billion just for roads, we would construct some good kilometers. Kampala has 2,110 kilometers, which has gazetted. Those which uh, has uh, uh, some, uh, those who, which, which are tamaked mm. are just 645. When will we complete the rest? If you get this uh, coming program of road construction of 69.7 kilometers, it is intended for five years. If we are going to be constructing 69 kilometers every after five years, mm -hmm. when will you complete the 2,110 kilometers? In so Kampala. what is needed mm -hmm. entirely is money. Let all responsible persons there is money. They, we don't want to hear the game of saying that there's no money, there's no money. We continue to collect money in the city. We continue to create more tax uh, avenues. Recently, the government has just put a law to collect money from the, uh, the, the tax, uh, tax uh, business. Mm. It is called uh, Parker User Fee. That, that fee yeah. We are planning to finalize the outdoor advertisement so that we could be collecting money. We are finishing the border border issues, that is transport ordinance, mm. so that we could be getting, even if it is 500 from border border every day, that is much money. We are improving on the sources of money, but you are continuing to say that money is not enough. Did you ever, as government, reduce any revenue? Did you ever reduce our uh, property rate increasing, mm. but service delivery decreasing. decreasing? So what we need is to harmonize the situation. Let the parliament be concerned. All these members of parliament, by the way, they pass they, through this. They even stay in Kampala. They stay in Kampala. Mm. Mm. All government administrative offices are in Kampala. Kampala is a hub of is a hub of of, 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 of economy. Of eh? it's people from Barara, from Gulu, they come to Chikubo. They come to Nasa Road. They come to 
industrial area they come to Nakas nakasero so it is a hub it's a hub of, 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 of economy it is a hub of tourism all the external tourists who come who come from those countries they go through kampala before they reach their de destination yeah, right. why don't you make kampala a priority we have only one capital city. It's Kampala. And, uh, what could even be, you know, uh, the consequences of these poor roads? Because we understand tourism is one <laughs> of uh, the, the, the issue, and uh, we saw uh, some government officials saying the continuous, you know, um, bringing up of the roads, the poor road system in Kampala is, you know, spoiling our market for tourism. <clears throat> what could be the effects? Maybe for the government, just want to make poor roads as. Part as one part of the <laughs> tourist uh, okay. uh, attractions yeah. that people come to tour. How could we find a, a capital city with such portfolios? Maybe that is the intention of the government. But um, what we lose is much. One, the, the people who own vehicles are spending worthless money in repairing their, their, vehicles. their vehicles. Mm. So it means that you are losing money. You have responsibility as a, a person. You have to pay rent, you have to pay school fees, you have to pay utility bills, but again, you put repairing of the cars part of your daily expenditure. That is too much. We are losing a lot of money in saturation. Mm. So if we don't look at it. Two, we are losing a lot of time. Productive time. Actually, I'm here. But I'm just imagining from here how, how many minutes am I going to spend to reach stay hall because of traffic jam. What causes traffic jam? Narrow roads, impassable roads. Mm. So we, we, if I don't reach cases A by 10, 9.30, there's a lot of things which are going to be missed by the, my service as the people of Kampala. Because there's a lot I'm, mm. I'm working on. Hmm? But because of jam, it will, I will be delayed. What so many people may not even be interested in coming in Kampala for trading. Someone will say, I'm coming from Barara. I just wanted to use one day to come from Barara, make my purchases, mm. go back. Now, would it be possible? No. Let me know. I, I, I want Let me get an alternative. An alternative. Mm. Which alternative? We'll just resort to go to Rwanda. It is near that side. Can drive that side. Actually, driving to Rwanda from Barara, it is easier than driving to Kampala. People from the north will just say, ah, let me cross to southern yeah. Sudan. Mm. People from Jinja and Mbari will just say, ah, let me cross to Kenya. It is near. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So you are killing the economy of the country. We are losing a lot. So what is needed is money so that we can rehabilitate the situation. Mm. Everything is possible. By the way, we have the capacity. We have the, a number of contractors. Once money is available, everything can be done in time. Actually, if the government of Uganda, if parliament can make a priority of Kampala as a priority in the next 10 years, mm. we can improve a lot of things. I just imagine this is newly created uh, cities. They would want to come and benchmark and learn Kampala. from Kampala. Kampala was created in 1945. These cities have just been created two years back. They want to come and benchmark, but what would be benchmarked from Kampala? Uh, now, uh, just before we conclude, uh, something small about the train system in Kampala. What's happening? The what? S the train system. Mm. What is happening, seemingly happening with the train system? Uh -uh, that is poor planning. Mm. That is a question which would be posed to the National Planning Authority. Mm. What do you plan if you intend to improve infrastructure and transport. Mm. What would you plan? Where are other countries reached? You saw what happened when Magufuli has just died. Mm. He has created train, how are they called? Those train, uh, the tubes. Mm. Hmm? But what is happening in Uganda? Is Tanzania better off in, 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 in economy? Is it better off than Uganda? All the intention of leaders so, if you talk of the train, me, I just see one and rough. What is train in Uganda? Do we have train system? Because, uh, you know, uh, the one that was even just helping Ugandans, that is the one that was taking them to Nama, it was that is not know, a train. pulled down. That is not a train. Uh, it was a beacon of hope. There is no train in Uganda. What is needed mm. is the National Planning Authority to sit down, plan, and make, eh, make wishes which can be 
eh? achieved, realized. realized. Mm. So, all these issues are embedded in one thing. That is the leadership of the country. If you have been the president for the last 37 years, mm -hmm. what have you achieved as a country? What is your plan? Do you have any, any plan for the future? Actually, this is a question Ugandans would be asking. If you are the president for the last 37 years and you look at Kampala in the same manner, in the same way, situation it is, would I continue to trust you if I were the one, if I have the ability mm -hmm. or the mandate? Would I continue to trust you? So, the issue is leadership because leadership manages everything. Leadership manages <coughs> security, leadership manages the economy, Finances. leadership manages um, uh, business, leadership manages everything. In terms of development, it's leadership because decisions are made by leaders on behalf, on of, behalf the of the people that, of uh, they are leading. Mm. I'll take that as uh, your final remark, hopefully. That is okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, well, that is uh, what we had for you today as uh, we did try to, you know, um, look into, you know, the state of the Kampala infrastructure when it comes to the roads which have, uh, you know, been on the lips of almost each and every Ugandan. And most uh, so actually, mm. you're talking of infrastructure mm. as a priority. Mm. But I want to task you mm. to look into all other uh, 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 affairs of Kampala besides infrastructure. Talk of the schools, mm. talk of the hospitals, talk of uh, the physical planning of the city. Mm. You're going to be surprised that out of all the schools we have, primary schools in Kampala, me I grew up from Rengo, Masaka. I was yearning to come and join some of these schools. I didn't get got an opportunity. Mm. and didn't get an opportunity. Can I surprise you that none of this school produced a child of po four points? Aggregates. Aggregates. Mm. The best was got five, four, got six. The second one got seven. Actually, we had 11 uh, pupils who scored six and seven. Wow. But you talk of those historical schools. So you get that torch and light into the schools and hospitals. We shall definitely don't limit be, yourself to infrastructure. We shall be definitely yes. be doing that, and uh, well enough you here, and hopefully, you know, you can uh, make another visit here, and we dissect all those matters. But uh, we are time bad, and uh, for at this point in time, I'd like to say, have yourselves a good morning. My name is, is Bruce Mugabe, and tomorrow is a Friday. We'll still be here, but see you tonight for BTM News today. <laughs>